Hi everybody. If you're watching this video, then you've already learned that in the early 1800s, um, we were blessed with the discoveries of Orsted, who realized that magnetism and electricity are really sort of one and the same. They are, they are intertwined with one another, and we now know that the, the force in the universe, known as the electromagnetic force, is really a combination of, of both of those that were previously thought of as separate forces. Um, it was from his work that Michael Faraday was able to go forward and, and make the discovery that if you spin wire inside of a magnet, or if you spin a magnet either inside a coil of wire or around wire, whatever the case may be, you will create a flow of current, a flow of electricity. That is to say, you will make electrons in the wire move from atom to atom, in this case, copper atoms, atom to atom. And that is the very definition of electricity. Electricity is the flow of electrons through a material, in this case, wire. This apparatus here is um, kind of weathered. It doesn't work right now because the belt itself is, is, is about ready to snap and therefore it's not able to create enough friction. So when I turn this crank, it's not making the magnet itself, I'm, I'm sorry, the wire itself to spin within the magnet. However, the good news is we can go ahead and we can make our own. It'll be a, a simpler model, but all we need is some pretty basic or some pretty basic materials. You'll see I have a nail here and we're going to use that nail to serve as an axle. I have two magnets here that are pretty strong, so I have to keep them far apart from one another or they will definitely snap together. I have a little miniature light bulb that requires very, it's, it's, actually, it's actually very low wattage, so it doesn't need a lot of electric current to illuminate. I have th some thin copper wire that is coated in red enamel paint, and the paint is just there to help make sure that the electricity doesn't um, uh, conduct out of the system into nearby environments. So it, it keeps the electricity in, or the flow of electrons in the wire. Then I have um, a pretty, sturdy cardboard tube here. It, it might look like a, a cardboard tube that you would see inside uh, paper towels, but it's much thicker than that. And it needs to be thick because you're going to see in a little while, I'm going to wrap this tightly with um, wire. And, and if it were weak, it would just crush. I have sandpaper. This is a block of sandpaper. And I need this because I have to shave the two ends of the wire when I'm done because the two ends of the wire need to be wrapped around the ends of my terminal. And you don't want the enamel paint to get in the way there. You want the electrons to be able to move freely into the ends of this light bulb. And then I just have a knife or you can use a razor blade. And that's only because I needed to create slits in the side of the cardboard just so that I can tuck um, the ends of the wire in those slits so that I don't bury them when I'm wrapping this up in wire. Um, this usually takes about 45 minutes and, I'm, and I want to make it very clear to you that while I feel bad you won't be able to do this this year with me, um, when we return to school, if you want to come in during a study hall, I will be more than happy to set you up with this and you can go ahead and you can do it. It takes about 45 minutes in total because you spend a lot of time wrapping the wire around the cardboard. But um, you're welcome to come in and try it out. It's a lot of fun. Um, but for today, I do have one that's already made. And I'm going to show you that now. And here it is. So you'll notice that I've taken that nail and I've drilled it through the cardboard tube. And that's going to serve as my axle. And then I went ahead and I wrapped that cardboard um, tightly with that wire. And I made sure that I did not lose sight of where the two ends of that wire were because those two ends eventually need to be um, wound around the ends of my, uh, the, the two terminals of my bulb. Now, if you paid attention earlier, you already noticed that I have those magnets in there. You'll see those two magnets are in there on opposite sides of that nail. And that's because what that's gonna do that allows me now to, to spin the nail, which is going to allow me to spin the magnet inside, right? So over here with this model, the wire spins inside the magnet. But here, my magnet spins inside the wire. And in either case, it's going to work. Okay, so just give me a moment. I have to set this up so that I can show you and I can demonstrate that this really does work. And um, here we go. 
There we go. So hopefully you can see that on your end, it is making little bursts of light. It's not very bright. If it were a, if it were a dark room right now, it would be brighter. But yeah, this is proving that if you just spin magnets within a wire, or you spin wire around a magnet, whatever the case may be, you can create a current that's enough to illuminate a tiny little light bulb. Thanks.